You can't. So in new stage, these kids were just, you know, hooked up with the team last week via draft, via free agency, and how did it go? It went good. You know, this is, um, for the staff and for the organization, it's an exciting time. You know, uh, we've got our draft picks here, but we've also got some free agent, uh, rookie free agents, and we've also got some trial guys. So, uh, you know, it's exciting for us to, to give them the best we've got as a staff uh, because this is some, some of those guys' last shot. Yeah. And when they leave here Sunday, it'll be some of them's last time that they put a, a football helmet on. So we want to respect that fact and, uh, you know, give them their best shot, give them our best shot uh, at coaching them. And you never know. No, no you don't. Yeah. I'm sorry. i got to make one more change. We're live on Facebook, though, so everybody loves this stuff. All right. right in the middle changes. One more thing, Coach. I promise I'm done. Live on Facebook. I thought that was like an email kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> you and me both. All right, Jimmy. We just pick it up. We just yeah. Pick yeah. It up. Oh, we're still on. Keep, keep on. All right, and you and you never know, right? You can find a guy. I mean, there's a there are a lot of those stories around the NFL, and it's happened here and through the years. Yeah. That you find a guy that caught your eye, and there it is. Yeah. I mean, there's some guys that come here just on a tryout basis that hang around uh, come Monday. Um, and then they end up on the 53-man roster, and then next thing you know, they're making a few plays, and then they sign a four- or five-year contract. So yeah. that's kind of the American story, right, especially in football. Coach, when I was leaving the house today, I said, I'm going to get the brown coat, right. oh, the different various shades <laughs> of the slacks, but I didn't I'm, – I'm going, where's the orange coming from? And then, bang. you got to have the I socks. said, hey, man, if I'm not wearing the brown and orange, right, <laughs> you are not hey. with us, okay? Yeah. Um, tell me this. Does it still hit you at all when you are introduced as the head coach of the Cleveland Browns? Um, in certain instances, yes. Um, but not uh, honestly, Jim, not really. It's, uh, it's one of those things you just, whatever your role is, you go to work and you try to do the best you can that day. Uh, and that's what, that's what I've tried to do. Um, and hopefully we've done enough. And uh, we'll continue to do that every day and, and we'll see where we're at. But... Um, you know, I couldn't be more pride, have more pride in yeah, being the head coach right. of the Cleveland Browns because, uh, you know, I, it wasn't lip service when I said that. You know, this is this is kind of my type area and this is my type town and, uh, of course, this is my type organization. I love the history and and everything behind the organization, and we just got to get it back there now. So, but you're an Alabama guy, right? right? And when did the, when you got here last year? And, and you join the staff and you, you join the Browns organization. When did all of a sudden you say, well, this is my kind of town. I click here. Well, it literally was when I first got here. My wife and I were, were driving over uh, uh, to look at houses. And yeah. I saw the smokestacks. And there's a Goodyear Tire and Rubber <laughs> Company plant in right. Gaston, Alabama. My dad worked at. Um, it just reminded me the feel of the, the people and everything around you uh, reminded me of my hometown. Uh, and then, of course, the, the passion that the fans create uh, is second to none and reminds me a lot of the passion that the folks in Alabama have for football. Hey, when you are the quarterback at the University of Alabama and you were the quarterback at the University of Alabama, what is that like? Well, it's uh, kind of like being the head coach at the Cleveland I, Bears, I was know? thinking it was. Yeah, it's kind of um, like that. You know, it's really interesting that um, uh, it, it has a lot of similarities and and uh, but you love the fact that there's so much passion with the fans, um, you know, high expectations. But we put those on ourselves, right. and uh, you know, hopefully, we're moving in the right direction. You told a great story the day you were introduced as the new head coach of the team. So I'm just going to paraphrase it and then give me a little bit more on it. But you told a story that you were out of football. Yeah. You were working at a car dealership, right. and it's a Saturday afternoon. And the Alabama game is on the radio, and you're listening to it, and that's when you said, boy, I really miss football. I, it's in my blood. i got to probably try and get back into it, right? Uh, well, yes, uh, sort of. I was working, making money. I was trying to finish school, and uh, that's the only job I had at that moment. I still didn't know I wanted to coach. I just knew I missed football. And, uh, like, I literally would have tears in my eyes, like listening to the game and yeah. washing trucks and I got paid per truck, so on Saturdays I usually didn't make a lot of money. Um, and then, uh, you know, later on I, I tried to play football in Italy and broke my arm and uh, came back and got a, a job at the 
a Nissan BMW dealership in Tuscaloosa, and that's when I realized that, yeah, I was making more money than I'd ever made in my life, and um, but just wasn't happy. And uh, my girlfriend at the time, which is now my wife, we talked about it, and um, you know, we decided the most important thing is to be happy, happy man. and it led us here. Okay, let's go to uh, when you took over the play calling when you became the offensive coordinator, when all the changes were made last year, and now you're really, you're dialing it up every Sunday. Um, what was it like, your relationship, as you watched Baker Mayfield, you know, start to really grow into that position? Well, I think you hit the nail on the head. He kind of grew as the season went along, and that's what you want to see is you want to see the progression of a quarterback continue to go up, and, and sometimes you can't always see it in the results. It just so happened we saw it in his results as well. And, uh, you know, that's the – as a coach, uh, that's the most comforting thing to know that uh, you have a hand. And, and I wasn't the only one, but uh, you have a hand in, in, in making a player's confidence rise and making their success level uh, rise. Uh, and that's what you try to do as a coach. I mean, you want to – you want to gain confidence in a player, we'll teach him something he doesn't know and watch him have success with it. Uh -huh. And uh, then he'll come back for more. And what is it like as you watch him now as he goes into his second season? Does he push himself? Do you ever have to push him? I don't. I don't someone like Baker with his competitive nature and his relentless uh, search for to be good, um, you don't have to push that. And, and that's an advantage to coaching Baker. You don't have to push him being great. You can coach him. He allows you to coach him. Uh, he wants to be coached. And uh, as long as those things stay constant, uh, Baker's going to be fine. So people taking a look at your offense now and what was added on March 12th yeah. when that trade was made and Odell Beckham Jr. joins the team. I mean, when you look at that, Coach, what are you looking at? You've got him. You've got Landry. You've got uh, Callaway. You've got Higgins. You've got Njoku. You've got Chubb. You've got Duke Johnson. At some point, Kareem Hunt. you got Baker Mayfield. Wow. wow. I mean, your eyes, it's like Christmas morning, isn't it? Yeah. There are a lot of great players, and uh, that's all they are right now is great players. They, um, uh, I think each one of them to a man has never won a championship, and uh if we can get everybody to buy into the fact that they're all together can accomplish more than any one. Two is one and one is none. And if we can get them to buy into that, uh, we will have something. But not until then. We'll just be a bunch of individual good players. And, uh, and, and we'll see. We'll see how it goes. So We've got to buy in. We've got it on the, uh, the thing board, when you yeah. pull through the parking lot, you know, out of yourself and into the team. And if we can do that collectively, we'll be fine. Yeah. Tell me this. Um, all of the, uh, the, not naysayers, but people that go, you know what, you got to remember now with all those guys, there's only one football. Yeah. But there is only one football, and they just have to learn how to, do, you, do, you, do they realize we have some, may have to sacrifice stats for wins? Well, ask Jarvis Landry. His stats went down yes. in the second half of the season, and I promise you he was happier than he was in the first half of the season. Uh, and that's the type of players we want. And if they, if they're not like that, we're not going to get to where we want to go. That's the, there's only one way, and that's the way you do it. I've been around it, so I know what it looks like, and I know that there's no, uh, you know, worried about myself so much as worrying about the team. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll get there. Yeah, December twenty third last year, the Bengals game <clears throat> at home, the game that you know Baker came out and said, "Hey, come on, let's fill the stadium," and they did. Right. I mean, they followed. You know. Um, He's like the Pied Piper right now. Right. Everybody's following. <laughs> okay. That game, though, was amazing. I hadn't heard that stadium, and I've called every game in that stadium. I hadn't heard that stadium like that, having so much fun. But I looked on the field, and the football team was having fun, right. especially on offense. I mean, you were doing things. I mean, Landry was throwing the ball. Right. I mean, all the running backs were in the backfield. When you do play with fun, when, when guys are having fun, they really perform, don't they? Well, I think you have to empower uh, players to play freely and play confidently. And to do that, sometimes you have to put yourself in a position uh, to do things you normally wouldn't do, especially in the situation we were in last year when we were winning. And Coach Stallings uh, used to tell me all the time, the fun is in the winning. Yeah. And we were winning, and, and that's why we were having fun, and we believed we could win. Uh, but no two teams are the same. So when this team comes back, in training camp and to finish up this spring and it comes back in training camp, 
we're not going to pick up where we left off. It's a start over type thing. And uh, if we start over and, and do it the right way and, and do it collectively mm -hmm. together, uh, then we'll get back to that point again, and not until then. Uh, we have a question from a viewer. Mike wants me to ask you, how do you get total respect within the AFC North? Well, I, I, it doesn't matter to me about the respect in the AFC North. I don't – I mean, we got to play the game. That's the good thing about football. You have to play the games. And, uh, you know, we're looking forward to playing our first game of the year, and that's the only thing we're looking for. And, and those games will show up at the schedule, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. They tell us what time we show up and we'll be there. And, and uh, as far as respect, we don't care about that. We just we just want to do be ourselves and, and play the best we can. Have you paid attention to all the expectations? Well, I know they're out there. Yeah. And, uh, I'm they're right fine. outside the window here. Yeah, I'm fine with that. I'm fine with the expectations. Uh, but those expectations can't be uh, – what we're focused on the focus that we have is our expectations on how we prepare and how we practice everybody else the same they're, the only reason they're putting expectations on us is to watch us fall it's the same reason that when you drive by an accident on the highway you slow down yeah. it's the same thing people want to build you up so they can fall tear you down they want to build you up and they want to watch the crash that's the excitement for them because that sells clicks and papers, and I don't know if they even sell papers anymore, but it sells internet net reports yeah, and, and uh, people on the Tweety stuff and, yeah. and all that kind of stuff. It sells, right. all right? And I've said this before, uh, players chase stats and media chases controversy because both of them equal money. Yeah. And that's what, that's what it does. So we understand why they are building us up. Mm -hmm. uh, we haven't played a game yet. And uh, until we do, there's nothing really to talk about from our perspective, now, do we enjoy the fact that, that people are talking about us and giving us some uh, attention? Sure, our fans. I'm very happy for our fans that they're starting to get noticed. Right. They're getting noticed as some of the best fans in the National Football League. Right. They're getting noticed that, that they potentially could have a good football team. But right now, it's just potential. Um, you and I share something in common, and that is that uh, the women in our lives – are wrapped around horses. No, no doubt. I am a farmer, <laughs> a horse farm owner. Right. Uh, you're, the loves of your life are right. into the equestrian. All mode three of, of them. All three of them. Yeah. No. Yeah. I want to just a tip for you. Do you clean stalls? I do. I do. I uh, when, yeah. before I came over, I cleaned stalls. I mean, on a tough day, there's nothing like going out and. Uh, Sifting some shavings. <laughs> I, I could think of a few better things to do, but but uh, I definitely enjoy it. I enjoy it because I'm around uh, my daughters and yeah. wife when I'm doing it, and uh, you know I just I'm kind of the the hand that just whatever they want me to do, yeah. I do. That's me. You know? yeah. yeah. See, we have more in common there. Yeah, no they like that. Hey, you're really ready for this, aren't you? I think so, but well, we'll find out. I yeah. mean, I've uh, you know the only thing I can do is the best that I can do. And uh, but I promise you, you'll get that. Yeah. Uh, and hopefully that's enough. I'm pretty sure it will be. Yeah. Coach, thanks a lot. Yeah. No problem. Great job. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Coach. That was fun. Good job. Good job on the socks too, buddy. <laughs>